So today we're going to talk about some basic geometry. This is a review from previous years, but it's good to know um, that you know how to say and write geometric terms correctly. So you will need your geometry journal, pencil or pen, and a ruler probably because we want to make straight lines straight. So gather those things and then come back. So the most basic geometric uh, concept is that of a point. A point is an exact location in space. Exact location in space. Now, it doesn't have any size to it, but it just is represented by a point. And usually those points are um, labeled with a capital letter. So we would call this point A. And it is a building block for other geometric concepts. A line is what happens when you have a straight path of points that are connected. So a couple things that you have to know that to name a line you have to have at least two points. So let's say this is point E and this is point F. We could label this line EF or we could say line FE. The important thing about a line is that the idea is it's an infinite number of points and it continues forever in either direction. And we indicate that with the arrows on either end. Now when we write line EF, we write it using a symbol, which is like a little miniature line above the capital letters. So we could write line EF or we could write line FE and it would both of these would reference this particular line. So let's say we still had this same line EF but we only cared about part of that line. Part of a line is called a line segment and is exactly like it says, it is part, a segment is a part of a line. So let's say we only cared about this part of the line. We would call that a segment, but it's part of a bigger line. When we write that, again, just like we did when we named the line, we use the symbol, which is a little miniature line segment, and we can name it in either order. And we read this as line EF, or line segment EF, and we read this as line segment FE but it's part of a complete line. Now, a ray is also part of a line, but it continues in one direction forever. So on this line, the line EF that we started with, we could start at point E, I'm just gonna write off the line right now, and continue in one direction, and we would call this ray EF. Now, E, has to be the first point when we write this because it is the starting point of our ray. Now interesting enough, I consider that the starting point, but most of the world considers that the end point. The idea is this is uh, where you have a stopping point and everything else, the line, the ray continues forever in that direction. We also could show a ray that starts at F and goes forward in this direction. Now in this case, we don't have a second point to name, but we would find another point to name. We, if though, we call this ray FE, ray FE, that means F is a starting point and we go in the direction of the E point. Sorry, that's not very pretty. But it's important that the symbols be accurate because if you if you draw a line like that, that indicates a line segment. If you draw arrows on both ends, that indicates a line. And if you only draw it on one end, that indicates a ray. In geometry, a plane is what is known as a flat surface with no thickness. It continues on in every direction right? It is flat. It's kind of like if you envision a piece of paper that could just extend out in all directions. Super, uh, th no, th no thickness to it, just a thin, flat surface. When we name planes, we name them by either the four 
letters you hear on the you see here on the vertices so this could be plane a b c d or we could call it plane m because that is the letter that's on the inside so plane figures are flat figures when you have two lines that never cross and stay the same distance apart we call them parallel lines now let's think about what that means uh, two lines, now that is true, but it doesn't have to be lines. It could be line segments or rays that could also be parallel. But they stay the same distance apart. So what does that mean? Well, if this is three inches, then it's three inches here and three inches here. They would never cross each other because they maintain that same three inches all the way through. Now, when we write parallel, we, we would read this as line AC, which is this line right here, is parallel to line BD. When we write it though, the word parallel is indicated by a symbol, which is right here. It kind of looks like an L, but it's a little bit bigger than you would, or two L's, uh, a little bit bigger than you would draw a regular L or a one. So that is how you indicate parallel. If lines touch each other, we call them intersecting lines. That point that I just drew would be called the point of intersection. So intersecting lines. Now lines can only intersect in one place because of the nature of lines. But again, intersections could happen with lines, line segments, or rays. So we use the word intersects to, under, to describe the relationship that exists here. Uh, and we would also use that same word. There's not a symbol uh, when we write it. We would say the word intersect. And then the other way that lines can intersect is um, at a right angle. And this right angle that you see is indicated with that square corner, and usually it's red. Um, that means perpendicular. And again, they could be lines, they could be line segments, they could be rays, but perpendicular means they are intersecting, but form this right angle. Right angle measures 90 degrees, and we would say that these two lines, or line segments, whatever they are, are perpendicular to each other. Now there is a symbol for perpendicular, that is an upside down capital T, and um, so when you write this, you would, if you write it correctly, use all the proper symbols. So this would say line AC, which I'm gonna finish this to make it correct. If this is line AC, this is line BD, and we can uh, write that they are perpendicular using all the correct symbols. Okay, so let's take a look at this um, image. Actually, why don't you take a second and copy it down in your notes? And then we can talk about it. Okay, so let's say we wanted to name points. Well, how many points do you see? Um, I see, let me get my pen working. I see point H, I see point W, I see point T, and I see point K. Now remember, um, points are named with capitals, so uh, this is not a point. It is there for a different purpose. So um, there's no shortcut here, there's no symbol. You have to write the word point and indicate with capital letter, okay? All right, let's say we wanted to name four different line segments. Let's do that. So. Uh, there's not really a point at T, so I'm going to draw one here. But I can see there's a line segment here. I can see a line segment here. I can see another line segment here. But we need four. Hmm. So you know what I'm going to do is I'm gonna write down what we have so far. So the first one, the green one, is line segment WT. And again, I'm using the symbol. The blue one is 
line segment TK, and the red one is line segment TH, okay? So now what I'm gonna do is erase these so we can look for another one, because we need another one. Well, it doesn't have to be consecutive points, so we could then take part of this line from W to K and call that a line segment also. Okay, it doesn't have to be the next point over, it's just part of the line, whatever slice of the line that you're indicated, indicating. Okay, let's see. I want to find another ways to, to label this line right here, okay? So one way we could label this line is with line WT because I'm using two of the points on that line. We could also call it line WK. We could also call it uh, in reverse, right? Uh, T line TW, we could call it line KW. So those are this, using the same two points, just back and forth. We could also go from, oops, line W, um, Hmm. Hold on, what did we just do here? We did WT and WK. What about TK? Line TK and its reverse, line KT. Did we get them all? I think we did. All right, what if now we wanted to name rays? How many different ways could we do it? Well, starting, this could be a starting point or an end point. T goes through H, T goes through K, and T also goes through W. So we could call this Ray TH, Ray TK, Ray TW. But I'm going to erase my marks and see, well, is there any other way we could have done it? Well, what if T wasn't our starting spot? What if W were our starting spot? Well, then we have array going to the right. And how many ways could we let name it? We could name it WT or Ray WK. As long as W is the starting point. What if we had a different starting point? What if K were our starting point? Well, then we could go, we're going in this direction. We could call it Ray KT or Ray KW. So remembering that when you name a Ray, the starting point or the ending point is always going to be the first letter when you indicate it uh, in, on paper. So remember, as you're doing your assignment today, it is critical that you use the proper notation on your geometric figures. So double check your notes, look in the book if you need help, um, but let's be precise and include all the correct information. All right, talk to you later, bye.